Good afternoon and welcome to your next legislative briefing. It's July 24th, 2015, I'm checking my notes already. Uh, and this week we want to update you on a couple of really interesting things that happened. We had two bills this week related to medicine that are not Medicaid related. Uh, two partnerships that really worked well for physicians this week. The first is a partnership with the physician assistants who are also members of the medical society and we're one of the few medical societies in the country to be fortunate enough to have physician assistant members. We're very proud of that fact. And we're very proud to have supported House Bill 724, which was entitled Amend the Composition of the North Carolina Medical Board. House Bill 724 actually took a uh, split seat between, that was shared between physician assistants and nurse practitioners and made that split seat a dedicated seat to, to physician assistants so that it expanded the membership of the medical board from 12 members to 13 members. And that guarantees that physician assistants who are licensed by the North Carolina Medical Board and overseen by them on a daily basis, that they will have a voice on the medical board at all times. And this has been an important bill for the physician assistants and for really the larger House of Medicine. And so we're very happy that uh, it passed from the House uh, a few weeks back. And this week it passed the Senate Health Care Committee, which was the substantive policy committee that it had to go through in the Senate and is scheduled to be on the Senate floor next week. And we don't expect any trouble with this. We expect this to be clear sailing. So I would expect to tell you next week that this bill has passed and it's on its way to the governor. The second bill that we want to bring up is, has been a much more difficult bill uh, to work on this year. It's been a bill that has been spearheaded by the Psychiatric Association in partnership with the Medical Society, the Academy of Family Physicians, and the Pediatric Society. And that bill is House Bill 562, short title was to amend the firearms law. And you've heard a lot about this in the news. They've called it the gun bill this year. And it's dealt with where you could carry guns, uh, how you could purchase guns, what kind of process you had to go through in order to get pistol permits or to uh, purchase firearms both privately and from retail facilities. It also included a provision early on that uh, restricted the way you could talk to your patients about guns in the home. And the Psychiatric Society organized everyone together at our weekly lobbyist lunches and brought the House of Medicine together to oppose that restriction. Uh, it was changed later to say you could have the conversation, but you couldn't document it. We opposed that. And through a lot of hard work by a number of people, including doctors making phone calls and sending letters, lobbyists working the building, we were able to get that restriction completely taken out of the bill while it was still in the House. The House bill then passed with a very favorable vote, a bipartisan vote, and it's been sitting over in the Senate for a while. This week it was heard in Senate J2 Committee, the Judiciary 2 Committee, and it is the exact same version as passed the House. So it, again, does not have any restrictions on the way you and your patients have conversations uh, or how you document those conversations that you're having with your patients, which is exactly what we wanted. It passed uh, with a favorable recommendation and is expected to be on the floor of the Senate next week for a vote also. Both of these are examples of when the medical society and the special societies come together with strong voice, unified voice, to get something done at the General Assembly, we're able to either get something passed or to block something that could be very detrimental to the way you take care of your patients. And we've used uh, one of our regular advocacy tools that I talk about all the time, the White Coat Wednesday program, as the vehicle for having those conversations, or one of the vehicles for having those conversations. And this week, our White Coat Wednesdays expanded because of specialty society interest from Wednesdays to Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, all three this week. So we had doctors from orthopedics, OBGYN, psychiatry, um, pediatrics, pathology, all in town this week, making visits around the General Assembly, talking to legislators about Medicaid and about other bills that they were interested in. And we're going to try to continue that. So if you have an opportunity that you would like to come, uh, since we don't seem to have a, an ending date in sight for the legislature this year, if you have a day in the next week or the next month that you could come to town, uh, let us know. You can contact us through responding to this website or responding to this blog, or you could contact um, myself. Uh, my email is on the website. Or any of your specialty societies could connect with us 
to do the same thing. But we think it's important that you have a voice at the General Assembly. It's important for legislators to know that you care enough to come to town. And that has been proven week after week through our White Coat Wednesday program, but even more so now that things are getting into the short rows of making difficult decisions about Medicaid and some of the larger issues of the session. Now is as good a time as any if you have a chance to come to town and be a participant in that. So we invite you to do that. We invite you to sign up. Uh, we look forward to coming back to you next week and talking about more bills of interest to medicine and passing our 100th day in the General Assembly session this year. Uh, not necessarily a landmark that we want to celebrate, but we'll uh, be coming back to tell you more about what happened. So thank you for watching, and we look forward to talking to you again next week.